this latest paper, which was published in 2022, so only six months ago, we, we, we looked at it and we said, PMP and Prince 2 do not correlate with success. So don't worry about getting PMP certified if you want to be a better project manager. If you want to get a job, yeah, get PMP. But if you want to be a better project manager, it doesn't help. What helps is organizational skills and people skills. And the latest paper, which was published also in 2022, we found of all the organizational skills, only strategy and leadership lead to success. And welcome to the Polytechnic University of the Philippines and Open University System and uh, in cooperation with the International Project Management Association of the Philippines and International Project Management Association of Young Crew Members, the second international conference on project management with its theme, Pursuing Excellence by Fostering Best Practices, Best Project Management Practices. Please let me introduce our last uh, plenary speaker for this morning. So he is the lead editor of IPMA's forthcoming book of case studies, illustrating best practice in project program and portfolio management. His career alternates between industry, consulting, and academia. He was a senior associate professor in project management at Xi'an Xiaotong Liverpool University and has a, has a decade of management and consulting expertise culminating in CIA role within Fujitsu Australia. Dr. Young is a world authority in the area of project governance. His research has been published by Standards Australia and Wiley to guide boards and top managers on how to influence business projects and to succeed. His research informed the development of Australian and international governance uh, standards. It is potentially the first major breakthrough on IT project failure in over 50 years. And some indicators suggest that his concepts should increase GDP by 1.6% to 3.1%. Dr. Young is a fellow of Australia Institute of Project Management and a fellow of the Governance Institute of Australia. He is a founding member of the committee that developed the Australian and International Governance Standards, ASH 016 and ISO 36500. Without further ado, Please help me welcome the founder and CEO, CQ Project Management Consulting, to talk about the best practice in project portfolio management. Ladies and gentlemen, let's give a virtual clap to Dr. Raymond Young. Yes, we can hear you now, Dr. Young. Good morning. Good morning. Let me share my screen. It, this, the slide is not a mistake. I know it says Nanjing and I know it says April, but what this presentation is, is an advance uh, presentation of something that we will unveil in Nanjing in April this year. Uh, the, we, we are producing a book, the IPMA is producing a book, and it's based on winners of the IPMA Project Excellence Award. So the book is called Best Practice in Project, Program, and Portfolio Management. Okay, so let, let me get started. Um, the, the background to this book is that there are a huge number of project managers. PMI estimate there are 16.5 million project managers. And they also estimate that by 2027, employers will need 87.7 million, uh, million uh, project managers, people to work in the project management field. But if they are like me, they are accidental project managers. They didn't study to become a project manager. They studied science or business or engineering, but they didn't actually study project management before they became a project manager. So that this is normal. It's ex you 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 get rewarded for doing your job well, and they say you do the project, 
And I remember the first time this happened to me. And I just said, I've never done anything like this before. And I was told, no, 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 you're good. You can do this. And after the first project that I did, I just thought, whoa, that was really hard. There must be an easier way to do this. So there's actually a need to guide managers on how to do projects and how to do it well. Now, if we look at the current guidance, what kind of guides are there at the moment? Um, there are many guidelines issued by OGC, PMI, and IPMA. So let, let's just show you some symbols that you might be familiar with. If you're in the UK or Australia, PRINCE2 is really dominant. Lots and lots of people have PRINCE2 certification. In China, which is where I am at the moment, and in the US, and I suspect the Philippines too, though I'm not sure, PMI and PMBOK is very, very strong. And people often think of PMP like this, get PMP certification. So th this is probably the mental landscape of most people. And also there's another uh, guideline, another standard issued by the IPMA, which I think is pretty good, but I've shown it as a small rectangle on the bottom right because it really isn't that dominant in most people's minds. But the success rate of projects has not improved significantly over the past 60 years. I'm not saying all projects are failures, but I, what I am saying is that the success rate really has not improved much. And what I, when I say that, I'm talking about um, did, when you finish the project, did you deliver something? And the answer is probably yes. And then you ask the question, did anything change that was important? Did profits go up? Did costs go down? Are the customers happier? Um, if you're an education department, did is literacy improved? If you're a traffic department, is traffic, uh, is congestion improved? And the answer is uh, at least half of projects do no good at all. At least half. I think about two thirds of projects are actually a waste of money. One third of projects is really good, but two thirds we should never have started. And that is not acceptable because so much of society now, so many of the problems in society need to be solved through projects because business as usual won't solve the problem. It will just keep the problem the same. So we need projects to improve um, the societal problems that we face. Let me just also hit this point a little bit harder because it's very hard for us to accept that our projects are not so successful. I remember as a consultant, I always thought my projects was very successful. And it was only after I stopped working as a consultant that I started to think about it. And I realized that technically my projects succeeded, but did the business improve because of the project? And my honest answer had to be, mm, probably not. Technically we did something new, but the business actually did not improve as a result of the project. And only after I stopped consulting was I open to um, consider this. Because you think about it, if you lose your confidence, you can't sell. You can't sell, you, your career is finished. So as a consultant, I never admitted that projects failed. And I, I wonder if in the audience, you feel the same. All my projects are successes, this one, this one, this one. And I'll challenge you, really? Did profits go up? Did revenue go up? Did costs go down? Is traffic better? Did the company make a profit on the apartments you just built? And the answer is maybe not. Here, here are some statistics. 
And it's an old study, but I, the reason I use it is because Daniel Kahneman is a Nobel laureate. And it's not just me saying that projects fail. It's a Nobel laureate saying projects fail. My research, two thirds of IT projects deliver no benefits whatsoever. Uh, Kahneman said three quarters of mergers and acquisitions never pay off. They actually lose money. Most large capital projects fail to live up to expectations. And the majority of efforts to enter into new markets are abandoned in a few years. 70% of new manufacturing plants are closed in their first decade. The success rate has not improved significantly. There are some successes, of course, but maybe as many as half to two thirds of projects are failures. Depends how you measure success and failure, of course, but between a half to two thirds could be considered failures. What does this mean? I think it means the guidance that exists at the moment are inadequate. We follow those guidelines, but we don't get a consistent success rate. So, what did the IPMA do about this? This is a picture of Professor Ding from Shandong University. He's the vice president of research at the IPMA. And he said to me, you know, we have a treasure. We have a treasure. The treasure are all the IPMA award winners. They, they come from all sorts of categories, mega projects, construction projects, uh, change management projects, uh, sorry, RD, um, regional development projects. We have all types of projects. And every year, many companies compete to see who can win a gold award, who can be recognized for a silver award or a bronze award. And Professor Ding said to me, we need to show people how to succeed. We need to learn and uh, spread good practices. And he asked me, would you like to write a book, a book of case studies of how to do it well? And I looked at it and I said, I'm actually quite impressed with these award winners because the IPMA framework, it, it looks at three things before deciding to award the gold award. It looks at whether the people, the leadership of the project was strong. It looks at the processes of the project and it looked at the results. And the results were quite impressive because it doesn't just talk about things like on time, on budget. It talks about were the customers satisfied? Was the project team satisfied? Were the other stakeholders satisfied? Um, did you realize the benefits? Did the uh, society improve as a result? So they had a very big definition of success. And I said, that's exactly what we should do because on time on budget is not the, the be all and end all. Who cares if you come in on time on budget if um, the company goes bust afterwards? I, I'm thinking in Sydney, there's this tunnel called this Cross, Harp, uh, Cross City Tunnel. They built the tunnel. It was built fast. It was built well. It was built on budget, but nobody uses it. People dislike that tunnel so much that they deliberately go the wrong way to avoid using the tunnel. And the company went bankrupt. So if you use traditional measures of success, engineering wise, it was perfect, but the company went broke and nobody in society benefited from that project. So we need to look at projects in a very holistic way. And I said, well, let's look at these gold winning uh, award winners. And, and the yellow bars here, I'm, I'm not expecting you to read this. The gold bars here represent the, the, the uh, best projects that I could see over the last few years. So for example, Sterlite Power, they built um, an electric 
transmission line through the Himalayas. And they provided electricity to a part of the country that had no power or power for only um, a few hours a day. And they built it in the worst possible terrain possible. And they built it next to a war zone. And they built it using helicopters for the first time ever in India. The Beijing um, airport, it's a world-class airport. Uh, Inner Mongolia Cultural Center. So it's a little bit like the Sydney Opera House for Mongolia. So it was, it's a symbol of Mongolia. I just want to talk about one which you may not have heard of. Spare Bank in Russia, they, they had to respond to the uh, COVID-19 crisis. As soon as the first case of COVID hit Russia, the bank responded. They said, we've got to do something. And, and they, uh, slow, they, they started uh, testing people uh, to make sure that nobody with the virus walked into the bank, no staff member, nobody from uh, the public. And they did it manually in the beginning. And then they realized quite quickly, um, this is not going to work. We, we, it's out of control. And they put it, they said, we need to automate the system. And they automated the system and they did it. Uh, a lot of the work, it was a 12 month project, but in a lot of the work, they managed to do it in only four days, five hours of sleep over four days. And they worked and they worked and they worked and they created an environment where people could be tested for free. They could uh, walk into the bank after they were uh, certified to be free of the virus. And they showed the whole country how to do it. So Spare Bank set the example. Instead of waiting for the government to respond, Spare Bank uh, set the example and showed the whole country how to do it. So we chose the best projects in each category. So, the, and the reason I'm, I'm emphasizing this is because as practitioners, we learn best from cases. We learn best from seeing how other people did it. So I, we've managed so far to identify some of the best cases in project management from the uh, IPMA award win, winners. So the next step, what are we trying to do? What we're trying to do is to become an essential reference for project program and portfolio managers, their sponsors and the business owners. And what we're trying to do is pre present case studies to show stories to guide managers on how other people have succeeded. If they use the guidelines, did they follow PM Bob? Did they follow Prince2? What did they do? How did they use these guidelines? Um, what was the key to success? Are there any unwritten success factors that are missing, such as top management support, governance? What exactly did they do? What's the steering committee? How did they actually work to make it succeed? So the book of case studies is actually written for both the beginning project manager and also the manager looking to achieve best practice results. We, we think this is going to be a bestseller because what currently exists is not enough. We know that because the success rate is not improving. So we want to find out what is the actual key, the real key to succeed in these exceptional projects. So the, the editorial team is... is uh, on the screen at the moment, and it's quite an interesting uh, profile. Um, so, for example, Professor Ding, Ron, Professor Ding, Associate Professor Raymond Young, that's me, Professor Mlad, I always don't know how to pronounce his surname, Radjukovic, uh, Professor Sun, uh, Associate Professor uh, Li Ming, um, was and, and uh, associate professor Effie uh, long Greek name sorry professor Neil Turner from Cranfield so it's it's a very um 
experienced team. We've got we've got um, six or, or so academics, and we've got twelve or so practitioners in their editorial team, and and we're looking at how did these gold medal winners achieve their goals? What did they do that led to success? So the first thing we did is we had to say, look, if we're looking at so many projects, we need a framework for analysis. And this book had to break new ground because the starting point was actually, uh, one, one, of the, one of the professors said, look, I, I think we can start by listing the success factors. It is commonly understood, um, how do you succeed? And I, I wrote back to him and said, really? Is, do we really have a common understanding? Because I've read a lot of the literature and I don't think there is a common understanding. And then the original professor who said that back down, he said, actually, you're right. I've read a lot of the literature and in the engineering, construction and uh, uh, infrastructure field, there is sort of a consensus. But in terms of success and failure, as in the project management field as a whole, they're, they're, it's really hard to know what we actually think success means. So if we don't know what success means, we don't know how to achieve success because we don't know what it is. So we had to break new ground and define what is success. And we had to synthesize a huge body of work that's likely to stand the test of time. So this is the first time anybody has seen this. And I'm presenting it here today in the Philippines. And we'll hope to present this in April uh, in Nanjing. And hopefully it will be received well. So we propose three new categories and I'll explain why we, how we came to these categories. <clears throat> when we succeed, we have short-term project plan success or project management success. We deliver the outputs, we come in on time, we come in on budget, we come in on spec, we keep the project team happy. The outputs were a success. So that's in the short term. In the medium term, the business outcomes were what we wanted. The business plan was there, the, 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 um, the benefits were realized, the business improved. So the, in the medium term, business was successful. And in the long term, society's impact, the impact of the project on society in the long term was successful. So we believe anytime you talk about success, you need to talk about all three. Not all projects will hit all three. The IPMA PE award winners tended to be successful in all three categories. Now, let me explain to you how we came up with these categories because it's quite in, uh, insightful. So we needed a framework for success. And I started with a paper in 1999. So this is common knowledge, but it's not that common. This bar at the bottom, initiation, planning, development, implementation, benefit, and close down, this came straight out of a project management textbook. And when I looked at it, and actually initiation was a small bar, it was one half of the size of this. I looked at this and I said, that's not right. It gives you the impression that each of these stages takes the same length of time. And in reality, initiation of a project takes a long time. There's a lot of walking in corridors and talking and meeting and thinking, should we do this project or not? And so initiation actually takes a long time. Planning, development and implementation is relatively short because once the project is finished, you want to realize benefits for a very long time. So the project itself is relatively short and project management success is when you come in on time, on budget to spec at the end of stage four. 
and that's project management success. And then there's project success where you realize the business benefits. So when, when we were talking about success and failure and how do we analyze the cases, we said, let's, let's use some standard words. And I suggest that, well, let's use Baccarini's 1999 def definition, project management success versus project success. And Professor Reg, sorry, I, I mispronounced his name. I'll call him Maladen, Maladen, because that's his first name. And he said, look, I've also done a lot of research on project management success factors. I've read all the engineering literature, and I've come up with this framework of all the different ways in which you can succeed. So there's the traditional way, time, cost, quality, scope, resources. And there's the project participants. Was it a success by the designer? What about the contractor's perspective? What about the consultant's perspective? What about the supplier's perspective? Okay, so that's the second way. And I'll call that stakeholders. And then they had the project owner success. And as soon as I saw this, I thought, oh, wait a minute, something's wrong. They, they talk about contribution to the strategy, benefits versus the business case, contract design. And I said, that's in the wrong place. And I kept reading and I, I then the, we talk about deliverable success and functionality, specifications. And then he talked about external factors like political success, societal, social success, environmental success, institutional success and regulatory success. And finally, he put project management success on the far right. And again, I said, wait a minute, that's in the wrong place. Because he talks about project management success, contract success, uh, communication, networking. And I just said, look, those two things need to be switched around. There's a blind spot in your thinking. Your research, there's nothing wrong with your research. Those categories are all realistic. But I, and, and once he had done this research and framed it, he presented it to practitioners and asked the practitioners, do you agree with this? And the practitioners all agreed that these are the different ways to succeed. But in talking to practitioners, particularly construction engineering and infrastructure practitioners, they live or die by on time on budget. They, if, if it doesn't come in on time on budget, they don't make a profit. If they don't make a profit, they go out of business. So for them, project management success is the most important type of success. And for them, they believe that project management success leads to project success. But that's not true. It's just not true. Um, if... if uh, if, so so I, I can think of quite a few examples now. So, for example, the Sydney Opera House. The Sydney Opera House was not a project management success. The, the Sydney Opera House was way over time, I think 14 times over time, and way over budget, way over budget. I think seven times over budget, or it could be the other way around. So it was not a project management success, but almost everyone thinks of the Sydney Opera House as a project success. So the relationship between project management success and project success is not that clear cut. Engineers tend to think one leads to the other and they quote different articles to say, this is true. I'm, I'm mainly from the IT background and I know IT projects just because you come in on time on budget doesn't mean people will use it, doesn't mean people will um, deliver business benefits. You develop the software, but did crime go down? You develop the software, did profits increase? So you see the connection between the two is actually very weak. So I reframed it. I put under here project management success is being on the left-hand side for project management. And I put on the right-hand side, project owner success as being part of project success. So I presented it this way. There's two types of success, project management success 
and project success. And all the subcategories underneath, I kept Mladen's, um, I kept Mladen's headings. And this was presented to the consult to the working group. And uh, Professor Turner from Cranfield said, look, I'm not sure you should be using the words project management success and project success. They are old terms that have been around forever. We should be more progressive. And he, he pointed me to a 2022 paper and said, look, we should be talking about project plan success, project plan success. Um, where we focus on the outputs and it's in the short term. And we should be talking about business success where we focus on the outcomes in the medium term. And we should be talking about societal success. You know, a lot of the projects we need to do at the moment that are crucial for the world are climate change projects. So we need to focus on did it, actually reduce climate change. There's no point coming in on time on budget and making a profit for the company if we actually didn't reduce climate change. So this is the new uh, framework for uh, success. Was it a success in the short term in terms of the project plan? All these subcategories, the subcategories, there are too many of them. So it's, it's, I'm, I'm going to work only at the heading of the major categories. But if somebody asks me, what do you mean by societal success? What do you mean by long-term impact? I mean, was it a success in terms of political impact, social impact, in terms of the environment, in terms of the institutions, in terms of regulations? Was it a success from this higher level? Um, did it reduce climate change? You know, uh, are people's lives better? Business success, was the business better off? Did you deliver the benefits that were expected? Did it contribute to strategy? So I want people to start thinking about their success because most people think about what they did and they say, well, you know, um, it came in on time. Uh, communication was good. Uh, the 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 where's it gone? The the stakeholders were all happy, so they often think in terms of the yellow. You can see when we talk about our writing, this yellow area is much bigger than the green area, and most people think about success in terms of short term outputs. They do not think about success in terms of the outcomes or the impact. So this is actually um, a breakthrough in the way of thinking about success. And we want to analyze the, the case studies to find out what did they do to have short-term success? What did they do to have medium-term business success? What did they do to have long-term societal impact? So that's the framework. And once we had this initial framework, we had to work out how did they achieve that? What are the project success factors? And this next bit, I don't expect you to read it, but we looked at it and said, wow, there's a huge amount of literature telling everybody what do we have to do to succeed? And in this first um, slide that I'm showing you here, there were actually 45 project success factors. And you think about it, if you're doing a project and you've got to focus on 45 different things, that's impossible. It's unworkable. The advice we're giving people at the moment through the literature and through the guidelines is not practical. It's just not workable. So we tried a different way. So this is version two. And I know it's a little hard to read, but what I'm doing here is I'm showing you. So here's Mladen's original paper. And he talked about all the different factors that we need to uh, uh, pay attention to, to have project management success. And he came up with a framework that he could use to analyze, was it a project management success? And again, this is a blind spot. 
most project managers understand there's a difference between project management success and project success. They understand there's a difference. And they say they're next. Okay, let's um, focus on project management success. And I'm saying, why? It's not as important as project success. And they say, yeah, but that's out of our control. So we'll focus on what we can control. And, and uh, underneath, I, I've summarized that under 1.1 and 1.2, all the technical and behavioral and contextual things that project managers have to do to succeed. So there were some factors. And then I looked at it and I said, yeah, it's only a framework. There's no real proof that these things lead to project success. It's just a framework. And then we turn to uh, the APM in the UK. And the APM have done some really good work. And they've come up with this thing. I, I forget what it's called exactly. A framework for success or how to succeed. And they've got this um, framework of all the things that they think are important. So one, um, project planning, two, goals and objectives, three, governance, four, competent project teams, five, commitment to success, six, governance. Um, so, so they've got their framework and they took their framework to a large number of practitioners and said, do you agree with this? And they had literature to try to confirm the framework. They didn't go the other way around. They didn't say, what does it take to succeed? And they, they started off with the framework and said, is there any literature to back up our framework? So, so and again, they only looked at project management success. So I said, well, that's no good. Project management success is a nice to have. We always want to come in on time. We always want to come in on budget if we can, but it's more important to help the business, to reduce crime, to improve literacy, to uh, improve profits. It's more important to have project success. And using our new framework, it's also important to have impact on society, positive impact on society. And then I looked at it and I said, look, there's only three papers that I could find that was empirical based on surveys, based on re research that actually says, do these factors improve success or not? There were only three papers that I could find and they were, they were written by me. So I feel quite exposed here. Um, the first one found that high level planning and top management support were the only things that were important for project success. The second paper found six things that were important for project success. And the last one, and I'll show you these very, very quickly. But before I do, I want to question, ask a question about time. For me, it's now 11.15. Do I have time to talk a little bit more or should I try to close this presentation down? This is basically my last slide. Do, do we have another 10 minutes for me to keep talking? Or should, so I can show you some more detail? Go ahead, Dr. Go ahead. Yes. Go ahead, go ahead. Yeah, complete the, oh, the presentation. Okay, good, good, good. Okay, thank you. So, so let me just show you the research very quickly. It's, it's cited in these papers. You can read them if you're wanting to. But the first paper was asking about what does it take to really succeed? And what we did is we analyzed what factors were necessary and what factors were sufficient for success. And we summarized all the literature to five big meta factors. Get good staff, have a good methodology, get the users involved. And we found out that they were hygiene factors. They were necessary, but they were not very necessary. And, but, and they definitely were not sufficient for success. What we found instead was that top management support was almost 100% necessary and almost sufficient for success. Having a good high level plan, having a good strategy, knowing what you're trying to achieve is necessary and almost sufficient for success. So top management support is very important for projects to succeed. 
And I'd like you to think about that. Because if you look at any project management textbook, it's really quite thick. And it talks about risk and quality and Gantt charts and PERT charts, earn value. There's a whole lot of stuff about technical ways and techniques. But if you ask where in the textbook is there guidance on what do we do to engage the top manager, maybe there's half a page. Maybe there's one page. It's really not there. So the most important thing to succeed is top management support, but our books don't cover this at all. So there's a second paper which I've done, and it, it summarizes the six questions you need to ask at a, uh, at a top management level. And we look for relationships. So we had a huge database of projects, 110,000 data points. And we try to match these questions against uh, these data points to find out, did these questions correlate with success or not? And when we mean success in this case, we mean, did the customers, uh, did, did revenue go up? Did costs go down? Uh, and was customer service, uh, were customers more satisfied? So those were the three criteria for success in this particular paper. And you can see one asterisk means there's a statistical relationship. Two asterisks mean there's a strong statistical relationship. And three asterisks means there's a very strong statistical relationship. So you can see all questions in the initial stage, in the early, middle, and late stages of a project, and in the late stages of the project, and overall, there we have strong uh, statistical evidence that these questions are correlated with project success, with business benefits being realized. And finally, this latest paper, which was published in 2022, so only six months ago, we, we, we looked at it and we said, PMP and PRINCE2 do not correlate with success. So don't worry about getting PMP certified if you want to be a better project manager. If you want to get a job, yeah, get PMP. But if you want to be a better project manager, it doesn't help. What helps is organizational skills and people skills. And the latest paper, which was published also in 2022, we found of all the organizational skills, only strategy and leadership lead to success. So those are our hypotheses. What are we going to do next? We've got our hypotheses here. Here are the green factors that we have some evidence leads to business success and that lead to societal impact. These are the factors we think lead to those uh, um, factors, uh, those categories of success. These are the factors we think lead to project management success or project plan success. We're going to analyze each case, we'll get each company to write, rewrite their case, what happened in the beginning, what happened in the middle, what happened in the end, and we'll get them to say, how did they address strategy? How did they address leadership? How did they address commitment to success? So we'll get our case history first, what did they actually do? And then we'll ask them to break their uh, case down into what did they do in each of these categories? And then we're going to ask them, what would you do to repeat your success in another project? Okay, what would you do to repeat your success in another project? So maybe our framework here is missing something. Maybe it's missing something. So in their discussion, they'll discuss, we did this, we did, oops, sorry. We, we did this, we did this, and we would do these things a second time to focus on success. Is it really just strategy and leadership or is there something else? And then we'll ask our practitioners to review the case, to review the analysis and say, look, the guidance PMBOK, the guidance uh, PRINCE2, the guidance, the IPMA framework tells us we should do these things. Our case shows us top management support is more important. 
it shows us a high level plan is not as simple as what we think. It shows us, you know, whatever, whatever the practitioners see in this case. And we'll get also from the academics. The literature says this, but the case is revealing something else. And then we will finish with cross case analysis. We'll look at what the advice says and we'll look at what the different cases say. How do we, um, the, and we'll, we'll write this for the beginning project manager. The foundational advice says, do this, this, and this. According to our cases, only one of those things is true or two of these things are true. And then we'll talk about how do we have impact on society? How do we realize benefits? So that's the end of my presentation today. This is what we are planning to do. We've got one case started already. We've got about um, another 12 ready to go or in the process of, of being written. And I'm presenting this today so that uh, you as an audience can have a chance to give me some feedback so you know what's coming in the future. Um, and so, so I, I don't know, I, I guess I'm trying to tell you this. So you, you can think about success and you can think about, ah, I actually don't know how to be sure that this project will improve society. It's important that we solve climate change. It's important that we reduce hunger. It's important that we overcome the war. So how do I make sure that I don't just come in time on budget? Our IPMA uh, book of case studies of best practice and project program and portfolio management should be a leading edge book. And I want people to be aware that this is happening. So I, I finished from there. I, I don't know if we've got time for any questions. So I, it must be time for lunch. You, you guys have been thinking and, and uh, listening a lot. I don't know if there are any questions that you want to just ask me before we finish.